What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're having a blessed day. And if you're new here, welcome. Thank you for tuning in. Today, what we're bringing you is a video on how to make a 5.7 liter Hemi as quick as a 6.4 liter Hemi. All right, so starting off, let's look at the stock numbers. There's two generations of the 5.7. There's Pre-Eagle and Eagle. Pre-Eagle was run from 2003 up to 2008. Then the Eagle came along with improved heads and a couple other things from 2009 to present. So the pre-Eagle, pre-2009 5.7 Hemi makes 340 horsepower to the crank from factory. Now the Eagle, they make 370 horsepower at the crank from factory. Meanwhile, the 392 is pushing 485 horsepower at the crank from factory. Now, of course, there's a couple factory freaks that are going to make excessive numbers on the dyno, put down better times than rated at the track, as well as there's going to be some lemons that don't do as well as the rest of the motors and what they're supposed to. So that gap is anywhere between 115 and 135 horsepower, depending if you have an 09 plus or pre 09 motor. Now we're going to be looking strictly at the horsepower numbers. I know torque matters quite a bit. Everybody freaks out over horsepower and talks about horsepower. So we're going to use this measurement to compare the cars and the modifications. If you want to look at ETs, these modifications could get you the same zero to 60, eighth mile times, quarter mile times relative to the 392 or better. So the first three things are going to gain you horsepower and improve efficiency. I would do them together if you have the money, but most people do not. I did not. So I did one of the things. I did headers. Was it smart to go with headers first? Not necessarily. Was there a hole in my mid pipe? Yes. Everybody says do the camshaft, then do the heads, and then the exhaust. So the camshaft is going to close the gap on that 115 plus horsepower number between your 5.7 liter and a 6.4 liter. On average, you're going to see a gain of around 70 horsepower to the crank on 5.7 liter Hemis. So after you do the camshaft for pre-Eagles, you should be sitting around 410 horsepower to the crank. And for the Eagle motors, you should be around 440 horsepower at the crank. <laughs> you're gonna greatly improve acceleration in top end. Not only are you gonna gain horsepower, but instead of revving out to 5,600 RPM, you're gonna rev out to around 6,600 to 7,000 RPM. Then the torque converter, you're gonna need a higher stall speed. You're gonna be able to launch from a higher RPM and you're gonna help low speed acceleration. Since people recommend doing heads next, I'm going to go ahead and touch on the heads. So on average, with a good set of heads properly ported, you're going to see gains of up to 40 to 50 horsepower to the crank. So that would put the pre-Eagle motors around 455 to 460 horsepower to the crank. And that would put Eagle motors at 485 to 490 horsepower to the crank. So as you heard me say with the Cayman heads, the Eagle motor is going to be producing 485 to 490 horsepower at the crank, but the pre-Eagle motor is still sitting around 455 to 460 at the crank. So we're going to have to do more work to get pre-09 Hemis up to par with the 6.4 Hemi, which leads us into the next modification and the last modification on this list that's actually going to provide gains, the exhaust. So long tube headers and a cat back or a full exhaust system. You're gonna see gains of around 35 horsepower. So that would finally put the pre-Eagle up to par with the 6.4 coming in at 490 to 495 horsepower at the crank. And the Eagle would be pushed up to 520 to 525 horsepower at the crank, which both of them are technically slightly above the horsepower that a scat pack 6.4 or whatever else you wanna call it is making to the crank. But the 6.4 comes with a limited slip differential from factory, as well as that eight speed transmission. So you're gonna have to make up for it. Luckily, you can install a limited slip differential. Most 5.7s don't come with one. I believe that some of the manual versions actually do. I'm not too sure. I just wanted to point out that these numbers are theoretical. It's not 100%. It depends on the mileage of your car. It depends on how much it's been ragged on and everything else. You have to take all these things into account. Now, a healthy motor with these modifications done right should make around these horsepower numbers. But now we need to talk about putting that power down reliably. So 
as I mentioned, let's talk about a limited slip differential. With a limited slip differential, you're gonna put the power down more efficiently through both tires rather than one. The open differentials that these cars come with put power down through the tire of least resistance. They take turns. You're gonna lessen wheel spin and improve traction greatly. You're gonna get off the line a whole lot quicker and even put power down better from a roll. And all of your ETs are gonna improve as well. Your 60 foot, your zero to 60, your launch is just gonna be incredibly different. Even from a 40 roll, you're gonna feel that power be delivered more smooth, more quickly, and a lot more aggressive matter of fact. Overall, you need a limited slip differential, especially seeing that the 392, 64, scatty daddy, whatever you wanna call it, comes with a 309 get rag from factory. And on to the next mod of putting that power down reliably. What's the point of having all this power if you don't have a proper wheel and tire setup to deliver it to the pavement? I see people cheaping out. I see people getting heavy wheel and tire setups and it doesn't make sense to me. If you wanna be quick, do not cheap out. You're gonna find yourself with heavy wheels, hard tires, noisy tires, tires that do not grip the road even if you do a fat burnout to gain traction go get you a nice light set of wide wheels and tires that aren't going to add weight to your vehicle they're going to shave weight or at least keep it the same get a nice sticky tire as well so it hooks up to the pavement real well even if you don't do a burnout and when you do do a burnout it's going to hook up like no other a good light wide and sticky wheel and tire setup could make the difference between a good race or you getting absolutely walked and for the last thing to put all this power down reliably, I've mentioned it in multiple videos, 180 degree thermostat. I know y'all might be sick of hearing it, but you damn well need it. Keeping the car cooler is gonna have you make the power that you're supposed to be making to the crank in the wheels. When your car is between 180 and 190 degrees, it's gonna be at peak performance. Beyond that, you're gonna start being considered heat soaked and your computer's gonna pull timing. You're not gonna be making the best passes. You're not gonna be feeling the most power when your car is heat soaked you are down on power plain and simple so instead of sticking with a stock 203 degree thermostat and not considering it go ahead and grab you 180 degree thermostat keep the temps down in your ride and actually make that 490 to 495 horsepower to the crank for the pre-eagles and that 520 to 525 horsepower to the crank for the eagle and i know you guys would like to know what these crank horsepower numbers would theoretically convert to in wheel horsepower so i'm gonna go ahead and do that for you So that roughly converts to around 430 rear wheel horsepower for the pre-Eagle motors and around 456 rear wheel horsepower for the Eagle motors. And the scat packs technically are making around 410 wheel horsepower from factory. So I gave you three modifications to gain horsepower naturally aspirated with these motors as well as a couple other modifications to make that power reliably. So not only are you gonna gain horsepower and be able to keep up with scats, you're gonna do it reliably instead of pushing your motor to the absolute brink. I do wanna mention that some people have done the 6.4 liter intake manifold with the active runner intakes and wired them up. And they say that it increases horsepower and torque just a little bit and improves the top end a little bit due to that active runner situation that they have. Overall, you're gonna keep up with the scat pack with these modifications if done right, possibly put a car or two on them and also you're going to do it reliably you don't want to go blowing out your differential trying to race a scat pack you don't want to end up being stuck in traffic with a stock 203 degree thermostat heat soak and have buddy come up next to you for a fun run and when you punch the gas pedal you get disappointed because you know that is not the full potential of your vehicle keep it running nice keep it putting that power out consistently and have a lot of fun surprising people with this low 5.7 in the modifications that you've done. If you learned something, enjoy the video, or want to support me in building the boat in the underdog dune buggy, as well as future projects, or just stay tuned in and subscribe, hit that like button, leave a comment on what you want to see next, and go check out my Instagram and TikTok to see daily posts of shenanigans rather than just once a week on YouTube. All right, y'all, go gab some scat packs. Whoa.